the feeling apparently from a city point of view is that they, they're not going to match well, for, at this moment in time when we're talking now not yeah. going to match that, that Arsenal offer they believe that he wants to go to Arsenal and that you know he has his mind set on Arsenal maybe more than than City so unless I don't know something happens and publicly Rice or Rice says like actually I've changed my mind I would rather go to Guardiola and City yeah. and the so there's, a, there's, blah, a, there's a feeling Jules when you're in negotiations as a player because People might think the player's not heavily involved, but the player's massively involved. Yeah. He's listened to the conversations from yes. his agent. Yeah. Not so much from Mikel Arteta or, or Guardiola, but his, his agent has given him the information. Yeah. And if we, he relays that information back to his agent where he's saying, well, to be honest, I'd rather choose Arsenal. Then that gets back to Man City's yeah. end. They then get to a point and say, well, is it worth pushing if he doesn't really want to come? If his preferred destination yeah, exactly. is Arsenal, then City will go to a certain number and say, right, we're going to go, let's just say 100 or yeah. 105, and that's it. And then he says, no, we prefer to go to Arsenal. Then City just go, right, we're out. Yeah, That's normally how it works. So Karen Brady and, and West Ham were really adamant on the 100 million pan, uh, like, like um, solid f uh, like fee, yeah. you know, without the bonuses. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Why, that's why they wanted. Is he worth that, Jules, for you? I mean, we're both big fans, so here yeah. we're a bit biased. I think it's a difficult conversation to have, Jules, because I think when you can look back in history and you look at the great players like Zidane going for whatever they were, 40, 45 million pounds, my perception is I look back at the true greats and their numbers weren't amazing because obviously football and time has moved on. Yeah. So you've got to, me especially, has got to try and forget about the, the, the real greats that went for sort of cheapish money. And you hold a midfield player, like Endo Fernandez is now going for 115. Yeah. And Declan Rice, who I think is a number eight, I think he's better than just a hold a midfield player. He can't yeah, do the I roles. Agree. He's at the same sort of ballpark. Yeah. The trouble is, I think when you start getting these type of players for that amount of money, then what is people like Harry Kane or Victor Osserman worth? What's, what's the strikers worth? Because in your mind's eye, if they're 115, well, they're 150. But 150, 200 these days, I don't think the money's there as it was when Coutinho was going and Neymar was going and we had that little sort of 18 month period where a lot of people went for all yeah, yeah, Dembele yeah. and other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's difficult to try and gauge, but in terms of the number and the player, I think it matches up. You think? I think he's a wonderful player. So we're hearing now that City have withdrawn completely from that from that race, if you want, from the Declan Rice race, which would leave, you would think if that's yeah. the reality. I'm surprised they never really threw Calvin Phillips into that. Yeah, probably because he maybe didn't want to move there or doesn't want to move full stop from City, but you would think that an 80 million plus Calvin Phillips yeah. could have been attracted for, for both for West Ham, right? Definitely. Yeah, for, yeah, for both, yeah. Definitely. If City are really not, then this is my this might be a negotiation tool or whatever. But if they're really not out, and this is Arsenal, clearly the door is open, and then I think he will he will go there. Is this a game changer for Arsenal? Have they yes. can rise in in this team? I think it, I think it moves the needle because if you're trying to compete with Man City, not only have you got one over them in terms of Man City were trying to buy the player and what you get from the footballer on the pitch. And I think these days, especially, I think the managers, I think, are looking at the character. Yeah. They're not just looking at yeah, the ability. Yeah, right. The leadership, yeah. Exactly. And when you, when, you, when you have someone like Declan Rice, who's the full package in terms of player, never a problem, never injured, always fit, yeah. always reliable, can play different positions. You can play a hold in six if you want. You can play box to box eight and score goals. And I think under Mikel Arteta, I think we'll see a more progressive player. Yeah. People always talk about his numbers. And I've been there myself. I remember playing for Everton years ago, many, many years ago. And the manager asked me to do a hold and midfield role because we were struggling. And we done it. We got a point. We done it the next game, got three points. And the local press wrote an article saying, oh, well, Don's, Don's gone. Like, his numbers have gone. He's not scored in six goals. But they don't know the, the role that the yeah, manager yeah, asked yeah. me to I play. See, yeah, the, so the I think, yeah. So I think under David Moyes, I think, especially when you've got people like Pakatar and Bowen yeah. and Antonio and so on, his role has been a little bit more defensive. I think under Arteta you'll see him flourish going forward. Yeah. I agree. I think I think as well he's a game changer. I think he can take this team to the next level, not on his own, but if you look at the collective from Arsenal last season, yeah. if you, and, and where, you know, party at times a struggle, Jorginho a struggle in this sixth position that can easily become a net, as you said, yeah. and you play on the front foot and you'll have a lot of the ball and you're going to play in the opposition's half, really. And, and something that's really underrated for fans watching on as well is the height and the strength. You know, yeah. when you've got a physicality and yeah. you see someone playing against you, you know, you see someone that's 6'2 and can run and physically very fit and you put that body in the middle of the park, you know he's going to cover every blade yeah, of grass. Yeah, it's not like you've got diminutive players. Massively. Then all of a sudden the Odegaards and the Sackers all relish yeah, uh, and be yeah. better. And, and I think that's what Declan Rice does as well. I think he makes players around him yeah. better.
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.